So now let's get on to the fun stuff, cracking Wi-Fi. Let's start with WEP. WEP, of course, is now legacy. I hope no one's using it. You never know. It is a weak implementation of the RC4 encryption algorithm. Uh, it uses initialization vectors to stretch a pre-shared key. In other words, the pre-shared key is originally only 40 bits. And so it adds a 24-bit initialization vector to just make it seem longer. Um, the problem is, is that the initial initialization vector is not a true random number. It's pseudo-random that has a bias. And if you can capture enough packets, you can figure out the bias. In other words, how it leans, how it tilts. You can run a statistical analysis. And you really only need like 20,000 IVs for a 40-bit key, which with a 24-bit IV makes it 64-bit, or about 40,000 IVs for a 104-bit key, which with the IV makes it 128. It does not take long to capture these, just a couple minutes. And it takes like less than a minute to crack. The thing about WEP, there's no digital signatures. There's no sequences. There's no timestamps, which means if we can capture one encrypted ARP packet and replay it to force the WAP, and we replay it at an accelerated rate to force the WAP to create initialization vectors and respond at an accelerated rate, we can quickly capture all the data we need to crack the key. This is, in cryptography, what we call a chosen ciphertext attack. We take an ARP packet. Now, ARPs, ARPs are easy to identify whether they're encrypted or not. They have a very specific sort of look. So we capture one, we replay it, high speed, the WAP responds in high speed, and we capture enough key material to run a statistical attack. So web cracking is definitely vulnerable to replay attacks. Here's an example of using AircrackNG. And so it is going and trying a statistical analysis on all these pieces until it finds the key and decrypts it correctly. Yay! Now we have WPA and WPA2. And we know from Network Plus that WPA introduced a key that constantly rotated from a master key. And it used a, a protocol called TKIP, the Temporal Key Interchange Protocol, I think, um, which basically kept the key rotating so that if you, you wouldn't have much time to crack it. And it also used much stronger, stronger encryption um, and a digitally sign or a, a, did timestamps and signatures. And then they came up with WPA2 which used an even stronger encryption algorithm, AES, with CCMP. The sequence numbers can't be replayed because they're sequenced. So you can't pick one and replay the same one over and over again. Still susceptible to a dictionary attack, however. And WPA2 has something called the crack attack, uh, where you can use a tool to force a WAP to reinstall a key that has all zeros. It's basically zero. The WPA and WPA2 um, uh, key is exchanged during what's called a handshake. And um, you could capture the WPA handshake and just send it to an online cracker. Um, or you could capture, you could force with a crack attack the WPA2 handshake. Uh, the key is reinstalled several times until it's forced down to be what we call dropped, zero length. So even with WPA2, we have these um, attacks that work. WPA2 Enterprise uh, basically uses 8021X, where the WAP puts you on hold and forces you to authenticate to a central RADIUS server before it lets you on. And this is how we do it um, when we have managed access points with a, uh, a central controller. WPS, Wi-Fi Protected Setup, um, this is something different. Uh, this was developed because users like Aunt Lucy and Uncle Ernie were having trouble putting in the um, WPA, WPA2 key. So the hope was that you could bring your device up close to the router, push a button, and wirelessly they would negotiate. And they would quickly um, 
agree upon, or the, the, uh, the device would learn the key quickly using this WPS, WPS protocol. Um, the problem is, is that that too is subject to some kind of cracking attack. And the key length of that is so short that you could brute force it actually in a day. Well, if you don't even want to wait a day, you can actually do this within a few hours. Because like, the pin is only eight digits. However, the pin is cut in half. So you can go through four digits and four digits simultaneously. That's only 11,000 values. You can go through that within hours. Now, what the, the routers did to kind of cut down on that is they would have lockout policies to cut down on the, the pin cracking. Um, so if you had just so many bad attempts, it would lock you out for a little while, which meant that your cracking might take a few weeks, but it was still feasible. Um, but the workaround is that it was based on MAC address. So if your attack tool would try a couple of pins as one Mac and a couple of pins as another Mac and a couple of pins as another Mac, you could keep going real fast because none of those Macs would hit the, um, like the threshold for lockout. Now, the only problem, of course, is that doing this kind of brute forcing probably trigger a denial of service against the, the cheaper, lower end WAPs. There are cracking tools against WPS, and the pin can be recovered in minutes. So we know that we have two hash values that the AP uses to authenticate the client. These use sort of one-time non-reusable passwords called nonces. They might be weak in some versions. And so um, these nonces plus the pins and other values create the hash. But if the nonce is known, like maybe we could look it up because of the vendor, we could match the hashes really quickly to discover the pin. There is an attack called the Reaver Pixie Dust attack, which you can get in Kali Linux, that will basically do a Pixie Dust um, uh, WPS crack attack against WPS enabled routers. There are loads of WPA and uh, web cracking tools. AircrackNG is the old venerable one, um, and it, it works very well. I personally found it to be, um, while very effective, kind of uh, cumbersome because you would have to open several windows, one running Airmon, one running AeroDump, because the AircrackNG suite is uh, like a dozen or 13 or so, or maybe more individual tools that are called air something, NG. And so I've got one that's do dumping, one that's monitoring, one that's cracking, and it was kind of uh, cumbersome. So there was an updated version called beside NG, and beside NG in the background uses elements of the air crack suite. Beside NG is sweet, <laughs> and it's really fast and really automatic. But there are plenty of other tools, Kismac, Kane Enable, Web attack, Reaver, Web crack, uh, Cow Patty, Cloud Cracker, Wi Fi, Fern Wi Fi Cracker. Fern Wi Fi Cracker is pretty good too in Linux. So these are just a few of the WPA and Web cracking tools. Here's an example of a WPS Reaver attack right here where it's trying different pins. It's in the middle of trying different pins. So that is information about cracking Wi-Fi.